Welcome to the TCO Studios in Minnesota, the home of the Vikings. We are glad to be here with the OTP. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Amy, how are things back in Nashville? Mike Keith, the sun is shining. It is a lovely day in Nashville, Tennessee, but we miss you guys. It's, it's kind of sad here without Mike Keith. Well, we miss you being here, but we are excited that the great – play-by-play announcer for the Minnesota Vikings, Paul Allen, has invited us into his studio to record this edition of the official Titans podcast. Paul Allen, welcome. Uh, Thank you. And uh, Amy, uh, nice to meet you from abroad. And it would have been cool if you had been here uh, because Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center, which came into fruition in 2016, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not homorific with this. It's, if there's a better facility in the country, I'm going to need to see it with the three stories here, the TCO radio studio where uh, where your Vox is originating from now. The TV studio is phenomenal, so maybe next time, right? No, oh, definitely next time. I'm not missing this trip twice. <laughs> no chance. I like how you got the full name in, just like I get in Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park in yeah. Nashville. And, and also, also, Amy, you missed your favorite team just whooping butt on our ones yesterday, so – when, uh, when we're done with uh, with the podcast, I'm going to roll out to uh, one of four perfectly manicured practice fields, and I might even root for the Vikings' first offense to stop Jeffrey Simmons just one time. I mean, can we get a triple team and a fullback just one time, guys? Why do you love Jeffrey Simmons so much, Paul? Uh, because I have three technique envy. I mean, I've called, <laughs> I've called games here for this will be my 22nd season. And during the course of that time, like, I started right when John Randall went to Seattle. Now, that's that's a three technique of all three techniques ever to three technique. Uh, but during that run, whether it's Sharif Floyd and an injury, whether it's Tom Johnson, a free agent from New Orleans, I mean, seriously, that was like Aaron Donald for us when he had six and a half sacks. It's just so difficult to find a Jeffrey Simmons Quinnen Williams, Dexter Jackson, uh, or Aaron Donald, or or Gerald McCoy back in the day. It's just so difficult to find those guys, and we've tried. We just haven't hit on them. Uh, Jeffrey's fantastic, and we are lucky to have him and have talked. You know, in Nashville, he is known as Big Jeff. Yeah, and around the league, he's certainly becoming known as Big Jeff, and he is. Probably one of the three best at his position. Absolutely. And is now compensated as such. Right. And, and it you know, the, the three technique has, and when I see you guys at the combine, may, maybe we've chatted about this before, but the three technique in the National Football League, that's a pass rushing defensive lineman, defensive tackle, the three technique has become quasi the new quarterback, where if you don't have the right Jeffrey Simmons and the right quarterback – then you're not gonna you're not gonna win the Super Bowl. And I mean, just just look at the team that won it last year: Mahomes and Chris Jones. The team they beat: Jalen Hurts, uh, Fletcher Cox is nearing the end. Likewise for Brandon Graham, but they still know how to play sure. that that position, which is so key. This edition of the OTP, as are all editions of the OTP. What's OTP mean? Official Titans podcast. Okay. because like The I'm kids like, love the acronym. Well, I'm waiting for. Mike Keith loves the acronym. The acronyms. kids love the acronym. So you got to go. You, you can't say official yeah. Titans podcast. Yeah. You got to say OTP because at some point there will be a T-shirt. Right. Well, I don't want to be canceled for fear of being canceled in Rockwood or Rockvale. Yes. I don't want to draw the comparison to the song from 20-some-odd years ago. You're down with Mike Keith. Yeah, you know we. You know You're me. down with – Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know yeah. we. Well, we get that a lot. Yeah. There, oh, you do? there are many people who think that's where we got it. We did. Okay. But it's brought to you by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Been in business for 76 years, taking care of Tennesseans. Find out more about Farm Bureau Health Plans by visiting their website at fbhp.com. Can I do – before Amy, before I let you ask a question of Paul Allen, may I begin with a trivia question? Sure. Okay. Here we go. What do Vikings coach Kevin O'Connell, Quentin Tarantino, and Mike Keith all have in common? Amy, you can join in as well. Wow. Um, What do Kevin O'Connell, Quentin Tarantino, and Mike Keith all have in common? I would say if we're going alphabetically, meaning we're beginning with Allen, uh, which even would be ahead of AM, Amy, um, 
I would say you all have movie star eyes. Okay, thank you. No, no problem. I'll take that. Yeah, no that, problem. That is not a correct <laughs> answer, but it is an acceptable answer. Thank you. Amy. Oh, I, I mean, I am just, this is not a question I was expecting yeah. even a little bit. Well, that's why you do it. Uh, yeah, we're flummoxed. It, 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 is it? She's is gobsmacked. It I am gobsmacked. Yes. I am just, I don't know, Mike Keith. We were all born in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. That's Whoa, I mean, if okay. you It's not a surprise for me, I yep. know, to people, but Quentin Tarantino always has a Knoxville reference in every one of his movies. Even Pulp Fiction? Yes. Wow. Well, that's because that's where Bruce Willis's father was from. Oh, wow. In Pulp Fiction. Holy cow. What about Reservoir Dog? I'm sure it's a, it, it, yeah. it, there is a, it is always mentioned in mm. every Quentin Tarantino movie. Wow. Kevin O'Connell was born in Knoxville, yep. and I got the story from his dad, Bill, yeah. who was out at practice. Hmm. So I That's met awesome. him. I was helping uh, the grandson get a Derrick Henry autograph, Yeah. and so I was talking to granddad, who's Kevin's father. I said, I have to ask you a question. I have always read that Kevin O'Connell was from Knoxville. Mm -hmm. He said, that's right. He was with the FBI. And they moved him to Knoxville in the early 1980s. Mm. And so Kevin was born there, didn't live there very long. Yeah. But, yes, he is, well, a, he is it, a Knoxvillean by birth, as is Quentin Tarantino. If you in any way are having trouble with, say, the, with the vast and ever-expanding Tennessee Titans radio network, if you in any way are having trouble with the Paducah <laughs> affiliate or maybe Chattanooga or maybe Rock, uh, Rockwood or Rockwood, Rockvale, yes. Uh, knowledge like that and minutia like that, I'd charge double. You should. Quite honestly. Yeah. I don't know what the affiliate fees are out Paducah way. Huge. But nevertheless, I'd charge double because that's the minutia and information you get that is unto the Titans radio network. Well, trust me, Paul, the OT people at this point, if they haven't turned off, are about to. Because that is the minutia they don't want. Yeah. But I brought that up because I thought you might find it interesting. I thought it was fantastic. I, I know Amy I'm going to bill for it on the uh, simulcast Saturday. Go ahead. I know <laughs> that you and Amy Wells, or that Amy Wells doesn't find it interesting, yeah. but I hope that you would. Uh, Amy, does he always speak to you like that? Yes. Yes, consistently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. This is, this is how this goes Well, on you should program. hear how she speaks to me. Well, I understand that's a family. She created yeah. the official Titans podcast. Okay. She forced me. She says, we are going to do a podcast. I'm like, no, we're not. And she kept going, and she wouldn't stop. And so we started doing it, so she would stop. And now we've been doing it for seven years. Yeah. And the OT people are a thing. They are. They are a. There is a. Yeah. There is a culture. There is a group. There is a body. Yeah. Literally, Paul, worldwide. Yeah. People listen to the official Titans podcast. Well, that's fantastic. I. I, I don't want to bring things down. For You're not. You. I'm just here to amplify. But I hear this every year at the combine. Um, it bounces around the NFL scouting combine in Indianapolis, where you guys are. You have a prominent presence every single year that Amy is one of the elite football minds in the entire National Football League. It's true. And if it weren't for you, she'd be able to better spread her wings. That's true. So I'm excited, to get, back. I'm excited to get these questions All from right, her. All right, so Amy, what is your – since Paul Allen is sucking up to you clearly, what is no, your – No, I really like it. I'm sure you do. <laughs> what is your first question for him? What do you yes. want to know about the 22-year voice of the Minnesota Vikings, Paul Allen? Well, Mike, it's so interesting that you were – talking about people who have a lot of things in common with you because apparently this is just what the show has become today oh, yes. Um, yes because i was thinking about what <laughs> paul allen and mike keith have in common is that you guys have both been privy to miracles on a football field mike keith of course with the music city miracle we know we know we know yeah. and hey. then we have paul allen with the minnesota miracle minneapolis which, miracle yes excuse me with the minneapolis miracle the something with m's you guys have things with m's and miracles and alliteration it's lovely um so i've got to ask about that play i've got to ask about that moment in your life because a i'm sure that you get asked about it so much by everybody paul allen but what stands out to you the most about that play that moment that call i'd say the um in driving to the divisional round of the playoff game at u.s bank stadium 
against the New Orleans Saints, there were several things going through my mind. First and foremost, I am not a Sean Payton fan. And this was before before that game. I mean, it goes back to 2009 and Bounty Gate and everything. You know, he got suspended for a year, man. I mean, they, they had a bounty on Brett Favre and basically tried to maim him during the game. So I was kind of out on him then. Um, and I'm just I'm just not a fan of the way he handles things and that Nathaniel Hackett uh, hack job that he put out there as coach of the Broncos kind of daggers a lot of that conversation. But I was thinking about Sean Payton being what, what I would refer to as the anti-Vike. It's almost like underneath his, his visor, he, there are seven, uh, uh, seven heads and ten horns popping out of it. It's, <laughs> and, and then late in that game, I'll never forget how he went to mocking the skull champ. Uh, you know, with this, whether you like it or not, we got this skull chant up here, and, and they do it in the stadium. And, you know, he was in a position where things had turned so much in the second half. They couldn't lose. They, I mean, they could not lose. We're winning 17-0 at halftime, and we can't lose. It's the loudest I've ever heard that building. Well, then Case Keenum throws a bad pick. We have a punt blocked, and, just all, and Drew Brees goes shotgun no huddle, 26 straight plays, and we couldn't stop him. Uh, so he's he thinks that they're just an absolute cinch to win the game. And and I caught him through my binoculars uh, but, uh, during a break, mocking the skull chant right in front of our fans. And there was some vitriol in the stands, and, you know, Peyton walked back and did his thing. Then we put a miracle on him. So that, that was incredibly joyous. And I'm generally turned the other cheek guy, so I'm not, I'm not one that – is looking for pain to be bestowed upon an adversary. You are a lover, not a fighter. Well, this is the love covenant. Yes. It's not the OTP. It's a love covenant. And um, and so, therefore, when he lost, I found joy in that. Uh, but uh, the conversation I had with Mike on my drive to the stadium, and, and Mike pointed out to me, Paul, I know you don't write down, uh, you don't script things. You don't write down like Minneapolis Miracle or And There Is Your Dagger or Andy's Loose. Uh, but Mike said that he writes out all of his lines for every single drive and that I'm to do that in a game of this magnitude. So without Mike's tutelage of scripting every single thing I said during that game, I don't know if, if I would have gotten to the term Minneapolis Miracle. So See, this, Amy, I'm a blessing. This is the first opportunity for me to go eyebrow to eyebrows, my chins <laughs> and his chin, and thank him for guiding me. Tell the truth to the Paul. Minneapolis Tell miracle. Tell Amy the truth about what was. How did you come up with Minneapolis Miracle? Um, it's it's. I, I don't script things, and, and no, I know you, you don't. don't either. No. Uh, so therefore, what comes out, God intended to come out. There you go. We started that possession, and I said to the analyst Pete Bursich, uh, Pete, uh, we're going to need a Minneapolis Miracle to win this game, and so I said it. And I remembered it, and. Then the rookie safety from Utah, Marcus Williams, blew it. Uh, the anti-Vike had chagrin on his face. And Stefan Diggs rolled in from 61 out, and, and I stamped it with it's a 61-yard Minneapolis miracle. Uh, and then I went crazy after that. I mean, there were fans trying to climb into the booth. Jonathan Gannon, now the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, a good friend of mine. Kevin Stefanski was our offensive coordinator now with the Browns. Kevin's the best friend that I've ever had in football over a, a, a two decades. And well, there, I mean, Kevin is super calm. Gannon is pounding, because the coach's booth's right next to us, pounding the glass so hard, I thought it was going to break. You got our money guy, Rob Brzezinski, standing up on a table, cheering with the fans. Uh, you had to peel me off the ceiling, so I'll never forget that. But through it all, as Mike will know, with things that come out of your mind and subsequently your mouth in moments like that, and you hear them back, it's like, wow, I mean, wow, I really said that or I really said that because – It's almost scary. Well, I built it up to – and I didn't even know what the weather was going to be like in Philadelphia the next week. So I'm like, uh, we're going to Philadelphia, and I hear it's going to be 46, uh, 46 and blustery, and we're bringing a purple rain, something like that. <laughs> well, the, uh, the purple rain came without Prince Rogers Nelson – we took a 7-0 lead in that game and subsequently got outscored by seven touchdowns or five touchdowns, and there was your dagger. So that's uh, that's the answer. But the beauty of it, Amy, is at that time the NFL rule was it was the touchdown on the last play of the game. Yeah. Case Keenum to Stephon Diggs, 61 yards. But the rule at that time was that you had to, to kick the extra point. So stupid. And yeah, Thomas Morstead's playing three technique for uh, for New Orleans. Okay. So 
you got a chance to do the skull chant with Case Keenum leading the skull chant you remember the on, video. on the field. Yep. So the ultimate in your, your face. Your memory's unbelievable. Well, no, I just, I mean, it was just, I was happy for you so yep. much. But it's an iconic the, video It's thing. an iconic video thing. But the first thing I had to know, I'm watching on television, and the first thing I had to know is what did Paul do? So I had to find it. Well, thank goodness they started playing it right away on television, yeah. on radio across the country, because right. I knew you would kill it. But but the, and you well, crushed. But it. you're very kind, thank you. But you know the the analyst Pete Bursich and maybe with a uh, uh, coach Mac or Wycheck or whomever the the analyst with whom you worked, maybe there are times you know like the analyst jumps in on big moments sure. or whatever, like the Minneapolis miracle. Um, so so therefore so now we win. And I'm sitting in the Vikings locker room, and, and here's a, an East Coast area code, and it's Peter King. And I've known Peter, but he changed his number, so it didn't come up P. King. And all he said was, what did you say? And, and so we started a chat right there. Okay, so from there through, like, the next four days, I mean, it's how I met Adam Schefter. And I, ha- I got the biggest dogs of the biggest dogs calling me to see what's up with this Minneapolis miracle. And, and it shocked me how, how many looked at it like this. Did you talk to your analyst after the game? Oh, he just stepped all over you and just jumped all over you. And I'm like, I, and eventually I'm like, are you out of your mind? I mean, that was unadulterated from the heart emotion. And that's how it was supposed to be. Sure. So if I'm not professional enough to stop so somebody can get in whatever and start and stop and start, then I don't I don't belong being in this job. So it it was beautiful how um, Pete reacted, and it just kind of tied the whole thing together. It's like, um, was it uh, who was it with you on the Music City Miracle? Pat, Pat Ryan. Ryan. Okay, well, I, we played that call earlier on my radio show when we had you, and you're doing you're doing your bit, okay, and you're focused, and you hear, uh, he's okay, got there, something. yeah, he's got something. Okay, there he goes. Okay, just like the the Bengals um, analyst, it, he would be the case in point here. I don't, I can't remember his name. Dave Lapis or Dave Lapham. Lapham, right? Yeah, I mean he's, he's great. Ju- oh, he's just jumping all over my man I though. Know. Every single play, I know. Well, now that would be difficult. I know. Every single play to have guys <laughs> back off. It's like uh, Cousins back to pass, fires left, and then all of a sudden, oh! You just hear from the analyst. Kind of like, gave it away. Hey, there. can we wait yeah. for the miracle here? Yeah. You Thank know what you. I'm saying? Lapham's a good guy, though. Yeah, they're all there. They're mostly all good guys. Mostly all good. Yeah, I mean, you've done it a quarter century, man. I've done it. You know, I'm coming up twenty two. Twenty two. So, and, do you um, still do horse racing? I still do. Yeah. Canterbury Park. Canterbury Park is the name. I'll be calling races there tonight. Is what brought me to Minnesota from Northern California, and I went to high school and junior college in Southern California. I'm from Washington D.C. I never went to college, uh, so therefore my path is antithetical to that of many to get to this spot. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you know of any play-by-play voices in the NFL. I auditioned for this job. And, and like, putting a tape recorder in 2000, sitting in the baseball press box at the Metrodome, <laughs> calling into a tape recorder. And then the job opened. I'm like, yeah, I got my tape. Well, uh, well, they actually took it seriously. And oh, I also had a radio show, and we get how the business of it works. It's like, yeah, we got this radio show, and, you know, that's going to help us and the whole thing. Well, I got beat by uh, somebody named Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. From Oh, Hacksaw from S- San Diego. Yep. Uh, Saw had done the Chargers and USC Trojans. Um, okay, cool. I've never done it. Chip chair chance. Give it a try. Whatever. Well, Saw said some disparaging things on his Southern California radio show about Hideki Arabu and Lawrence Phillips. Whoops. So the local chapter of the NAACP, um, they jumped him, and rightfully so, and he got fired. So now all of a sudden, I'm I'm at Metrodome on one day's notice calling a Vikings-Steelers preseason game. And the bosses liked it. And I'm, I'm driving out to the State Fair to do my radio show, and I get a call from one of the vice presidents saying, wow, we're going to give you the job. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Out of nowhere? No college, no formal training. I didn't cut my teeth around the country, stealing other people's styles. I'm this horse racing guy and so on. Well, then 20 minutes later, the same vice president called and said, hold your horses, and that's not a Canterbury Park pun. Uh, Red McCombs basically has said, why should I let you idiots hire the next announcer when the one you just hired embarrassed the entire organization? Well, then I got beat. <laughs> so he hired the guy from Arkansas State? Uh, his, his name was Terry Stembridge, and he was uh, Red McCombs' best friend's son doing Austin P. baseball 
and like NBA G League or something in New Mexico. And and Ter- Terry was he, he was all right. He was he was just kind of boring. And uh, but but the key here, I think the lesson on the OTP, yeah, you know we would be that I handled the decision with a plum. And and when I did fan line and pregame and everything and my radio show, I, I never ripped Terry. I'm just not like that anyway. So I just kind of let uh, God take it where it was supposed to go. And uh, lo and behold, 22 years later, here we are. That's a great story. Well, what what helped from the race tracking piece, Mike, is like so now so now Kevin Harlan, for whatever the reason, took a liking to me. It's like my second or third year. We're at Soldier Field. He's doing Monday Night Football. All of a sudden, somebody's hugging me from behind, going, "You, you," and he's just so eclectic and goofy. And he's and he actually went through like seven things he had heard me do, and he's like. Yes, yes, no, never, 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 stop this. Yes, but think about it, yes, yes, and change this. Is there a more giving guy in terms of a national guy than Kevin Harlan? No, he's. I love him. I would not be in the position right now if Kevin Harlan had not put his arm around me, Christian to Christian, Vox to Vox, and been like, you're different, and it's hard to find different in, in, the, in this game. And uh, so then I took what he said – and, and then I amplified it by saying, you know what, I've called horse races now for about 20 years. And there are things that I do during race calls that I know will work in the NFL. For instance, for five years, a horse opens up five at the top of the stretch. And uh, back to so-and-so in last, and Mike Keith has built a five-length lead, and Mike Keith is loose with a furlong to go. So I took that. Adrian Peterson came in the league in 07. He'd get loose up the middle, and I would just, in guttural fa- fashion, blurt, and he's loose. And NFL Network and ESPN seemed to like it. They played it a lot, but the fan base liked it. Well, that was a horse racing call. Right. Or, or and uh, the Detroit Lions defense has been left in the wake of a keen turn of speed by Justin Jefferson, who is gone. So, you know, when it comes to identifying outside the numbers, inside the numbers, uh, he's to the 50, darts left to the 40, back to the right to the 30. That has to be there for sure, uh, uh, specifically on radio. But there also is a theater of the mind aspect of it uh, that, that I really enjoy. And it's doing things like that, left in the wake of a keen turn of speed, and he's loose. Some of this horse racing stuff that I brought over, nobody had done. So you know how difficult it is to come up with new stuff and be unique and please everybody uh, in this field. But um, that, that gave me an advantage early in my career that nobody could take away from me. Well, Paul Allen, something that's interesting is that your appeal seems to span beyond just people who are avid radio listeners. Obviously, there's people who listen to your calls on the radio and you are the eyes to the game. Um, But you're getting people like Pat McAfee who are shouting you out. And so then there's that whole other generation of people who are engaging in sports in a completely different way. Yeah who are also looking up your calls. That's got to be kind of crazy, right? Well, it's unbelievable. And, and you know, a, as a dedicated, bona fide Christian, uh, the only way I can look at that is God has put me in a position where 28 to 30 years in my career, and I did not go to college, and the life I lived when I called races in San Francisco was quite lascivious, and I sin every single day. So I'm not sitting here trying to be Billy Graham. However, um, you know, to at 22 years in the NFL, 25 years with K Fan Radio, and 28 years calling races here, 30 overall. The fact that through last year, with some things that Pat McAfee did via his podcast, LeBron James eventually tweeted me, and then McAfee this year, that God has my star ascending and my following growing this far into my career is breathtaking. And that's the only way to put it is I'm just so moved and touched by the love that I receive, uh, and, and the Bible is very important to me from God, that I serve. I mean, he has given me the gift of hospitality. And the best thing I can do when I crack microphones is to recognize that there are those listening now, whether it's OTP, whether it's the Vikings Radio Network, KFAN, or a race call, they're looking for distractions in their lives. And God has put me in a position to, to do that, whether it's through humor, whether it's through energy, whether it's through excitement, accuracy, and he just keeps growing it. 
and I'm humbled, and I just get out of the way and do it. You talk about hospitality, Amy. I come here today to be on Paul's radio show. He has the governor of the state of Minnesota here yeah. to personally greet me, Tim Walls. Yeah. The governor Wait, come- seriously? Yes. Yep. We'll, we'll have the pictures. Go to at 10 Voice. Uh, you'll be able to see the pictures of Paul and the governor and me. But I, I can honestly say I have never been anywhere and and had someone – I mean, th- people might have a, a meal. Yeah. Or, or a beverage or, or you know, something, a, a T-shirt or a keepsake of some sort. But f- for you, Paul Allen, to have the governor of the state of Minnesota here to Thank say, you. Mike, Thank you. welcome to right. the land of 10,000 Lake. Right. I, I was blown away. Well, he, he's, he was here to sign a proclamation, but the problem is, is I don't know. I can't remember Amy's last name. Right. Uh, well, but, and it's spelled A-M-I-E, like the Pure Prairie League song. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hear that on the bridge on Sirius Satellite Radio all the time. A, like the every bridge. other song. Yeah, that's right. It's a phenomenal song. What you song. gonna do? Yeah. Hey, that's it. That's yeah, that's one. right. Yes. Um, I'm in fan of you for a while. Yeah, I got it. Maybe um, longer. If but, I Amy, what's your do. last name? That's so good. Wells. Uh, Amy Wells. Well, he came here to sign the proclamation to make it Amy Wells Day in the state it's of true. Minnesota. And this was going to stand the test of time. Uh, but then I don't know what you said to him, but you're like, no, it's just, you know, it's uh, make it Mike Keith Day. or I did. Some, yeah. I did. So I he just he ripped here. the whole proclamation up and it's like he got upset. It was terrible. Crazy. Yeah, it's pretty typical. That sounds. Uh, yes. Yeah. I love how pretty Amy fires back. Uh-huh. That's phenomenal. Remember with the OTP, Duncan gets you ready for not only listening to Paul Allen on the OTP, but get you ready for the game. Get a cup of Duncan. America runs on Duncan. Now, we, um, uh, if we ever get to this, or, or maybe we're done, but... No, we're not. Just in case you wonder. Uh, and, you know, uh, with uh, Nashville and Knoxville and all the Bills, uh, maybe a lot of Vikings fans down there listening to the, uh, to the old OTP are wondering what the announcer thinks of the team this year, and I'm glad you asked. Uh, because we're I was not, going to ask. Well, we're not going to win as many games as we won last year. 13 and 4. Right. We're not going to win as many games as we won last year but not that many fewer. So we might win 10 or 11, something like that. We are going to be a tougher out in the postseason than we were last year. Why? Uh, Brian Flores, the defensive coordinator. And and the thing is, is he has the advantage of unpredictability and deception that is on his side for, let's say, three games until they get proper tape on it. Uh, well, I saw that last year with O'Connell, and that was like my big take into the season, is we have unpredictability and deception on our side with this new head coach because people don't know what's coming. Well, we we scored 25-26 a game, 113. The offense was really good. We have that with the defense, even though we don't have a lot of players who are ballyhooed. Now, the defensively speaking, Brian's calling card has been taking below average players and making them average average and making them good, good and making them great. So what I've seen in practice and just with a general idea of what's coming when we uh, play Tampa Bay on September uh, 10th, um, I believe that Brian Flores tightening things with the defense in, that was requiring uh, tightening, uh, that it's going to be better than last year. The offense, I mean, there, there's a little work in progress to this thing, believe it or not, when you let Dalvin Cook go. But I think we're going to win fewer games and be a tougher out in the playoffs. Good. Good to know. I mean, 13 and 4, asked. I was going to ask. No problem. But it's nice Amy, when – Amy would have asked 10 minutes ago. It's a nice when the – when you have somebody on who can ask questions of themselves. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know, you could enter um, Paul Allen, could yeah. interview Paul Allen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Being a good Christian is really always bringing it to yourself well, there and you going go. first person. So, yeah, I understand that. Nicely played by you. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have another day of joint practices today. Um, Paul Allen, I'm always, I ask everybody this because I think everybody in the National Football League does it a little bit differently. How do you take in a joint practice, hmm. given that there is so many things going on at one time? Are you only watching Jeffrey Simmons, or are you planning on shifting around it all and watching other things? Excellent question, because we have another one next week against Arizona. I love how our joint practices are set up this year. Like, we got the Niners here last year for two days. Well, now we have you guys, one of the most physical teams in the National Football League, and everybody knows if you get into a street fight with the Titans, you're going to lose the game. So you got to find a way to run around them, throw over them, do whatever you got to do, and, and slow that creature at running back, and then you got a shot to win the game. Well, Arizona here next week, they're, they're smallish and fast. 
they got a lot of, they got a lot of speed so I just really like how those work out for us up to the regular season uh, but joint practices Amy are tricky uh, because uh, preparing from a play-by-play standpoint and 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 we do a simulcast up here so I'm calling TV and radio at the same time for three games do you get paid more um, Oh, that's I, I can't I can't answer that. Okay. It's off the record. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, you told me that they give you six hundred seventy five thousand to do what you do, and right. I was offended because I don't get that much. Right. So I don't want to talk money. You're we actually a about, little low. I, I understand that, uh, but this is a chair. It's it's not me. Um, yeah, I'm not that Paul Allen. God rest his soul. I'm the other Paul Allen. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's joints are strange because preparing for a preseason game is markedly more difficult than a regular season game. Uh, so therefore. I'm, I'm memorizing numbers and body types for the Titans, but I want to watch. I want to watch Simmons, and I want to watch DeAndre Hopkins uh, take take a pass from Ryan Tannehill off play action to see what that looks like. Uh, Malik Willis, you know, from what I watched last year, at times was just flat bad, I mean, with, with all due respect. Well, that's not the, the Malik Willis I saw yesterday or a few plays that I saw when I watched the game from Soldier Field. Uh, so then I'll watch Levis and kind of uh, figure out – his throwing motion's strange. It's not Philip Rivers esque, but it's not over the top like Brady. So I got to figure that out. And he throws a nice spiral, and he's nice and big. So memorizing the numbers and the body types for you guys—that's kind of the A topic. But then about an hour into it, I'll just I'll roam down on the sideline and just start chatting with people. So let's talk about what both teams are looking for on Saturday night to give the OT people a bit of a preview. But first, I need to mention that SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. In case you hadn't learned, well, you should have been listening to the OTP because we've been mentioning it for weeks. SeatGeek, if you want tickets to the Titans games or other great activities in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to go. SeatGeek, the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Amy... So Titans fans can fan. Well done. All right. So the Titans will be looking at Willis and Levis at quarterback again. That will be interesting. Jacquez Patrick is a new running back who will get a chance. They will be looking at depth in the offensive line, continue to see the young receivers, defensively battle it inside linebacker, continues as people try to step forward. And now with Chris Jackson no longer on the team, Backup spots in the secondary seem to be available at corner and at safety. And, of course, the two young kickers need to show something as one tries to establish himself to take hold or else is it time that they pick up the phone and bring in a veteran kicker. Right. Those are the things we're watching for from the Titans. Paul Allen, what are we watching for that the Vikings are trying to get done Saturday night? Much. Now, the corner back situation for us, uh, we they, they kept five last year um, or maybe six. Uh, but we have three who definitely will make the team. Byron Murphy, Jr., free agent, Arizona. Um, Makai Blackman, uh, rookie from USC, who has gone lights out in training camp. And and along with those two, a Caleb Evans, second year, and he had concussion problems last year. Those three are in. After that, I mean, it's the land of opportunity here. There, there was a uh, 36 for the Vikings, Najee Thompson, uh, got into uh, nearly what was a bad scuffle on the field closest to the building with members of the Tennessee Titans special teams group. In fact, who's number zero for you? Sean Murphy Bunting. Okay, now that right there, Murphy Bunting and Najee Thompson almost was old school um, Spinks Alley or Tyson Buster Douglas. It almost got nasty. Um, so, therefore, Najee's a cornerback, okay? But Najee Thompson, uh, he's undrafted from Georgia Southern. I taped an interview with him earlier this week. I'll make this fast for you, but it is different. And, again, at this stage of my career and our career, I crave different. And this was different, where he's like, all right, I went to Georgia Southern. I uh, was a good receiver in high school in Georgia. But at Georgia Southern, they run the triple option. So I switched over to cornerback and wasn't uh, wasn't that good of a cornerback. So therefore, I spent the final three, four years of my life dedicating myself to special teams. That's all he did at Georgia Southern. A little bit of cornerback, and he's really good. He had a play from the gunner spot third quarter at Seattle. I mean, it was as good a gunner move as I've seen since we had Marcus Sherrills here. So you could tell this kid knew what he was doing. Um, so... He's a corner. Now, would they keep somebody like Najee, who's only special teams guy, he's never going to play corner, 
how do I factor that in? So the, the depth at corner uh, is an A topic here. Uh, our uh, We have a rookie quarterback named Jaron Hall. Uh, he's 25 years of age, went to Brigham Young University. When he came in against Seattle, I mean, he went against the offensive line that, I mean, it had threes and fours. We had, we had a guy on our line named Jack Schneider. With, with all due respect, I didn't even know he was on the team because uh, he, he just, I just didn't know who he was. Well, Seattle, you don't blitz a ton in the preseason, but Seattle wisely brought an extra guy or two against A, this line, and B, this quarterback. Hall never had a chance. I mean, never had a chance in our first preseason game. So watching his next step is very intriguing to me. Good stuff, Paul Allen. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you for welcoming you, us uh, here. Yep. Uh, this has been a great experience overall, and uh, your facility is fantastic. Yep. Thank you. Love listening to you. Likewise. It is joy. Listening it, to it you. It is just absolute joy. Amy, I'm sorry you aren't here in person because you would have the most fun. Uh, I am I am missing out. I can tell I am. But there will be other times. There will be other and times. And I will not miss those other there times. There will be other times and other days. For yeah, Amy, you, what, yeah, from, from what I hear, you have bigger things on your plate. So God bless you. <laughs> God bless you with that. And I look forward to meeting you in person. You'll see I her can't at the, wait. You'll see her at the combine. She'll be back. Sweet. All right. I never Assuming miss I go. A combine. She doesn't. For okay. Amy Wells and Paul Allen, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking all of you for listening to the OTP. Tighten up.